previously on Baseball Minnesota. It's like Woodstock, it's like a gathering, it's like old home week. People who haven't seen each other over the long winter come back and... We were here last year, like I said, and uh, everybody waits in line. It's, it's just a huge party. You can't, you can't find this place else. I know what you're thinking was coming in this year was, I want to be playing, I want to get exposure, and I want to sign with an organization. Here. Here's Leader with a hot shot that stabbed by the first baseman. He'll throw to second and back to first. It is a double play and the ball game is over. He must not have. Wayne Terwilliger talking to the umpire, but it'll go three, six, three on the double play to end the game. Don't forget, Saints will be home tomorrow. It starts a six-game homestand. Another tough loss, two-game losing streak. Open the first six games on the road, always tough. Now we got the six-hour bus ride going home. But the opening day is always something special in St. Paul, and I think that'll give the guys a big lift. Yeah, but if they can't get by out, who cares? You want me to call them? I haven't called them in a while, but I could call them tonight. I love this game, um, and and I make no bones about it. It connects me with a man whom I loved a great deal, my dad. That's what it is to me. I can almost hear him laughing, and I just love the game. It doesn't matter whether it's a major league game or it's a Saints game or the Fort Myers Miracle or the... the dreaded Butte Copper Kings. The game of baseball is the most, it's just the, the most wonderful way to spend two or three hours that I know of. Every game, I go out here on the same ball diamond, you know, it was, and, and, and I connect. And how many people can say, you know, that that happens? Biodegradable, thank you, that's beautiful. Okay, you guys. Okay, see you later. Bye. See you, bye bye. I'll see you later. Mike Vick and I became friends when he came to town. He said I ought to do the, the show from a treehouse. You got a big neon sign with your call letters on it, and you don't pay for that. And of course, I jumped at that. If I could get the station to go along with it, by God, there wouldn't be a better place in the world to do radio. Very, very odd to have a guy doing a radio broadcast at a ball game and not broadcasting the game. I don't think there's anything like that in the country. All right. This is the first, see this? This is the first thing ever carved by my father. He said it was an alligator. I'm not certain. You know, I, I, I mean, everybody assumes that I'm in baseball because Bill Veck was my father. But Bill Veck is the Veck is the worst name I could have. Being in baseball, nobody will hire a Veck. You know, m my dad wrote two books, which exposed these guys for the dummies they are. And I mean, I couldn't get a job. I am unemployable unless I own my own shot. When he died, my father had respect. My father had dignity. My father had joy. He's in the Hall of Fame. He was one of the most down to earth. He had no more interest in Bill Veck than the man in the moon. He was only interested in other people's lives. And he died with no money. There was no money. 
we lived good. Some years we lived great. Other years we lived not so great. But, you know, man, I mean, he just, he understood life. Oh, there's money all in your back seat. Yep. Are, I'll say they're a great asset, really, really big asset to games. Tonight is the home opener, and I know it's going to be really crowded, but it, I'm, I'm excited and a little scared. I, I don't know why. I just take it personally if anything goes wrong at games. I've been there so long. I'm on my 11th year there. Yep. It's been a real roller coaster ride. You did? You drive like a maniac, Shannon. I'm not surprised. I was a, a practicing alcoholic probably for, uh, what, 10, 12 years, I guess, 12 years. I'm kind of nervous. It's been a year since we've had one of these things, you know. Hi, Toddy. Hello, Jill. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Bob. I feel like going and yelling at Mike Vec real quick. I just want to yell at him one time about that, get it out of my system, just because I think it's going to be impossible to do a radio show with 20 people in a hot tub five feet from me. I don't know. It's just me. So I'd like to yell at him real quick, if that's OK. It's a pretty good front yard, isn't it? I mean, when you think about it, when I have, what's the worst that can happen with me when I'm having a terrible day? I have to come out and watch a train go by, look at a yard like this, sun's coming up, I'm gonna do some business. Boy, short of something happening to my family, it's pretty hard to have a bad day. <laughs> it's not a situation that helps you, and that's why I wanted to spell it out, because if I would've just, Say Chris Evans is interested in trade, I'd get all kinds of calls and they'd say, you know, here's a box of baseballs or whatever. I want them to let, let them know that we think you're a pretty good player and it's going to have to be a situation where you are going to get a lot of playing time or... I have to play a whole series since the very first yep. series. You know, play a whole series, play like two out of three games the next series, maybe two out of three and then a whole another whole series. No, that's fine. You know, because I, I will put up the numbers and I don't mind sitting in one game. I just have to get this off my. I just have to get this off my chest, and then, oh. I'm just, then, I'm, then I'm just going to go on with the season. It's just, I just got to get it off my chest. Did we cut his phone line? No, no. That that I'm actually, that that's real low on my list of complaints. But I'm just going to get this one out of my system because I know there's nothing that can be done about it. Could you have picked a worse place to put a hot tub when a guy's doing a radio show? There, I got it out of my system. <laughs> All right. Hey, I'll work out my frustration over this whirlpool on the painting, and by the time I'm done, have it out of my system. Boy, I'll tell you, this, this ball club made this town a, a lot more interesting for me, besides the fact that I live just a mile from it, and I grew up with outdoor ball, watching the Twins play at Metropolitan Stadium, and my memories of baseball being <laughs> sitting in the sun and seeing real green grass when they came. That was the last time I ever checked out the Minnesota Twins. This is my ball club. It's a mile away. It's uh, the kind of baseball I remember. It's, well, he, he's a workaholic. So it's, he gets to do all kinds of different stuff with it, though. He gets players, and he gets all this different interaction with people in the community. And it's very strange how, in three years' time, this, how well known he has become. It's kind of sweet, I think, really. It's kind of funny, too. Mike, I got a little on the ground here. Where's that paint thinner? You better not get me on the ground. I got a little. I'll kill you. Where's my um, stuff I bought? Opening day at home is always a big night. And so everybody, I think everybody's looking forward to it, finally getting to play at home.
I haven't seen the crowd. I've heard a lot about it from the players who played here in the past. I'm really looking forward to see if it's up to its billing. I imagine it is. I think they're tailgating in the parking lot right now. other things on my mind, though, too, today. I'm going in for that operation tomorrow. Yeah. I've never been put under before, so. Well, you know what they do? They cut, cut me right here, and they pull my skin back, and then they break my nose and, uh, and shave it off, and it's really rather disgusting. You know, I'm surprised I haven't broken more things or anything besides my nose because, you know, 10 years of heavy drinking, I was falling down drunk all the time. I'm surprised, you know. I feel really lucky, especially working at the bar, you know. I see a lot of people that aren't recovering, and uh, I feel very, very grateful. It's a miserable way to live, let me tell you. It's really lonely. You can have a million friends, but you're always alone. It's really it's very sad. What's your load? You got the bus. Do you guys remember when we first I had limo rides up to the game, and oh my god, it was like way underestimation of what, what it was going to be like. We'd have 200 people waiting for a ride up to the game, and, and, and yep. Yeah. And, then, and then just to get to the stadium takes 10 minutes. Or... Well, Giggles would say, let me your car keys, or get in your car, and we'd all be driving people in our own cars up to the stadium, you know? My bus. Yeah. Come on. Now they, they bought uh, two buses. One's called the Big Pig, <laughs> one's called the Little Pig. Pete? Are you Pete? No. But he's, we're supposed to talk to a Pete when we get here with the cars. Uh huh. Do you have? Um, did you? Did he send you tickets so you can get in, or you just? If you no, go, we don't have our tickets yet. Okay, go right to Fan Services and they'll help you. There's a table right there, All right. a counter. Okay. What do you want to do? Say to somebody, you got to have a ticket. What do I care? We're doing great. I'll let 100 people in here in the course of the night who won't have tickets or will have a story or will have left them. And you know something? 90 of them won't have ripped me off. Barty Scott out working the parking lot, walking around. You, you can't do that when you get big league. That's poppycock. For 15 years, I dreamed of making it back to the major leagues. That was all I ever thought about was the return. And suddenly, when it was right there within my grasp, I turned it down. Yeah. And my first thought after I called my mother was, I'm even dumber than they say I am. <laughs> hey, man! Of a baseball card! Anybody! They're going to play a game now, I think. Thank you. Mike, how you doing? I'm Great fine, choice, thank you, and the same to you. you. And a good year to thank you. you. And to you, sir. My dentist, man, you got to be kind to your dentist. Love your dentist! I don't know. I don't like this one. That looks like a boy. Yeah. I think it is a boy. See, I don't like the Cape Moss nose. I'm just not into it. Cindy's cute. But I don't know if I want that kind of nose. Oh,
thank you very much and a pleasant good evening everybody along with Dave Wright this is Greg Harrington and we've got a great night for baseball here David and we've got uh, opening night festivities and everybody seems to be in the mood to kick off the 1996 home season for the St. Paul Saints. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the first ride of summer here in the city of St. Paul, the home opener of the St. Paul Saints, Mishki, live from Midway Stadium in the shack, the shanty by the track, freshly painted, ladies and gentlemen, ready to go again. Another season out here above the left field wall, and what an evening it is for baseball, ladies and gentlemen. Fans, be sure to hang around immediately after the game. We have a special pyrotechnic treat for everyone. Jack Morris, his second appearance of the season. Jack Morris on the mound. What can be said about that? Forget about all the stories of whether he belongs there or where he belongs, ladies and gentlemen. This is his hometown. Born right here in St. Paul, goes into the motion, and the first pitch of the ball game is in there for a called strike with a fastball. 50 bucks right there. You going to do it? 50 bucks to get his head shaved. <laughs> Who's cutting the hair? <laughs> there it is. All right, I'll do it. I'll give you a chance. Yeah! <laughs> Woo, baby! Ground ball towards short, Castellos though, in time, that's all for Evans, and that's all for St. Paul in the third inning. No runs on one hit, and two left, and we'll go to the fourth, and Greg Harrington will chat with Al Shaver when we come back. 3-2 Saints, after three on the fan. The strange thing about Midway Stadium on a summer night when a ball game's going on is it's, it's almost surreal sometimes. It's like a Fellini movie sometimes, trying to figure out just what all is going on here. And then you look on the field, and God, there's Strawberry and Morris, and you think I should be watching this entire game. It, it, and it's, it's such a social thing. It's so extraordinarily social. <laughs> Jack Morris working to the number nine hitter, Duva, with a runner on third. Little Chopper, the third baseman. Evans cuts it off. He bobbles it. And all hands are safe. And the Gold Eyes push a run across. And the Gold Eyes have tied it up now. The razor. Come on, use the razor. You can do it, can't you? Where's my hair? Get head shape. aboard at first, Solomon aboard at third. Outfield swung around towards right for Gardner with a pretty good gap in left center field. Here's the pitch. Oh, he jumped on it. Mashing it down the line. If it stays fair, it's going to be trouble. It is a home run. Gardner drives it out of the yard just above the 320-foot sign. A three-run homer. And the Saints break it open with three here. It is now seven to three. I'm T.D. Mishke, and I'm, uh, I guess I'm a drifter. I'm just a drifter passing by a microphone in the night here. Uh, a drifter stumbling by a ball field on a cool evening with the wind blowing, the crowd cheering, and an old abandoned shack by a railroad track offering shelter and a place to rest. If you're out at Midway sometime, take a look over the left field wall. I come from left field in more ways than one, folks, and I'm out here tonight. The sun has gone down, the lights are up, the stadium glows. Ask me what's going on in this game. I have no idea, folks. Absolutely no idea. Oh, my God. Here's the pitch. A little roller towards short. Evans will cut it off. He'll go to second, but it's not in time. 
And the Gold Eyes get another run across to make it 9-8. to eight. Come on, somebody make a play. Let's go. Well, it's a fielder's choice, and there's maybe the inexperience of Evans, the third baseman. He's not played a lot of third base break, as we talked about, and he went to second there, but Powell can really run. Steal home, Darrell! The stadium itself has never looked this beautiful. Uh, Vec, I don't know if you're aware of this, is a paint fanatic. That's one of the reasons why, before we start every year, I make sure I put a fresh coat of paint on this shack. And now the pitch. Duva swings, hot shot towards third. Evans knocks it down. Another run is going to come in. And here comes another run. And the Gold Eyes get two across. God almighty. And now they take the lead at 10 to 9. Who's on the phone? We have John on line five. Hello, John. Tommy. Hi. Hi. I'm calling you from Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan? Canada. Well, we're playing you. I heard your national anthem tonight. And let me tell you, buddy, it ain't any easier to sing than ours. Three balls, two strikes, two out. Saints trail by two, but D. Alexander is the tying run at the plate. Brewer to the set, delivers. Strike three, call, the ball game is over. Mike Newbeck waited a while before he called that one. But it's a called third strike, and the Saints are down in the ninth, and the Gold Eyes win it by a final of 12 to 10. For St. Paul, no runs. They had no hits. There was one air. They strand one. And we are finished here tonight with the final score of 12 to 10. The Gold Eyes defeat the St. Paul Saints. And the Saints lose their home opener for the first time. We just lost this ball game, I think. No, no, it's nothing to do with baseball. Well, we did just lose this ball game, 12-10. Well, yeah, who cares? <laughs> they get it. These people understand. They know that the fun and games are just embellishment for the basic product, which is this wonderful little game, baseball. So they don't, you know, they know it's cheap theatrics that we do, but they love them. They love them, and when the first pitch is thrown, then they watch nine innings of baseball, and then they hope we do something stupid afterwards. And usually we comply. I don't think I can go that small, though. They can only do so much. That's a lot shorter. Well, it's crooked, and then they're going to straighten it, and then, like, as long as they're going in there, they might as well do something else to it, you know? Mishki, KSTP, good old St. Paul, big time Minneapolis, live from Midway, checking out, ladies and gentlemen. Sleep well, all of you. That's the end of the show.